glories of Bhagavad Gita. Tomorrow is Gita Jayanti, and it's also the Akadasi. So tonight we'll speak on the uh, glories of Bhagavad Gita, and that will be uh, if you could go to the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita by Srila Prabhupada. Okay. And then, yeah, just go to Bhagavad Gita introduction. Okay, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I'll tell you where to go. Okay, go to page 31 in the Bhagavad Gita, into the, into the introduction in the Bhagavad Gita. Page 31. You may not be able to see the pages, but just keep going and I'll uh, okay. indicate where you should stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll keep going. Keep going. All right, st I'll stop there and go down to the previous paragraph. Yeah, good much. Let's see, I lost it somehow. There was something that I, I saw. Keep uh, going up the page again. The other, no, the other way, go down the page. I mean, yeah. Okay, right there. Uh, oops, you know, you yeah. go down and go up the page again. Somehow we lost it again. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. okay, somehow you, you're not doing it smoothly you're just jumping and it's i'm losing i have to do it smooth so it doesn't jump oh sorry um, uh, yeah. should i go down or uh... i don't know i had it and then it's lost again oh, okay may i know the beginning no. uh, um, just keep going okay Go, yeah, go down the page. Let's see. I'm not sure where where it was. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. Keep going. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. All right. We shall find. Okay. Stop right there. Okay. Oh, you went too far. Go back up now. We shall find. This is the beginning of the paragraph. Yeah, this is the beginning of the paragraph. You went too far again. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We shall find. Keep going down, 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 down. Keep going, 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 going. We had it. I don't know. We, now we lost it again. Oh. Uh, um, the paragraph starts with we shall find. Oh, we shall find. Let me see. I'll find it in, here, in my book here. It was just here and then now it's done. I don't know. 
we shall find Okay, in the Bhagavad Gita itself, it's... Uh, here, Prindarash, I'm sorry, it's uh, we shall find day four in this Bhagavad Gita from here. Uh, it's on page eight of the Bhagavad Gita. So uh, I think it's up the page. Let me see. Uh, go down, go up the page again the other way, towards the top. Oh, here, like this, I should scroll down. Please go. Just keep going, and I'll tell you this. You just keep going, and I'll tell you when to stop. You just okay. keep going, and then when I say stop, stop. Okay. Keep going down. Keep going, keep going. Not that way, the other way. Yeah, keep going. Just keep going. Don't stop until I say stop. Let's continue. All right, stop, stop. Go back up, go back up, go back up. Go back up. Okay, okay, there we go. Keep going, keep going. Right there, stop there. Stop there. Right there, okay. Omagyan Timiram Dasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tas My Shri Gurvena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunya Vari Pasyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Taru Vishya Sindhu be the Chapatitanam, Pavane Gyo, Vaishnavi Gyo, Mahoma Maha, Jaisi Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, 
Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare. So one of the most celebrated events on the philosophical level of the of the conclusion of all transcendental knowledge is the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita by Lord Sri Krishna. Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to his pure devotee Arjuna on the battlefield during the midst of a huge war that was about to begin. Arjuna is put in a particular, particular situation where he seems to be confused about his duty. And Krishna is there as the enlightened one to uh, dispel or his doubts through transcendental knowledge. Arjuna is a warrior, but he is also a family man and he has a family with many friends and relatives. This battle was a family battle. It was the Kuru dynasty, which was divided between the, uh, the Pandavas and the Kurus. The Pandavas were part of the Kuru dynasty, and also they, they say it's the Vrishni dynasty also. Kurus were Vishnis and Vrishnis are Kurus and Pandavas. <laughs> and um, I mean, there's many dynasties in it. It's also called the Yadu dynasty too. And now there's a fratricidal war over who's going to rule the kingdom. Um, uh, Pandu, who was the rightful heir of the throne, died at an early age, and his brother, who was uh, meant to be the king but could not be the king because he was blind, uh, that was Dhritarashtra. Uh, now he's thinking, well, my my older my brother is gone, and then the kingdom should have went to me. Although I am blind, they should have gone to my sons. He has a hundred sons headed by Diodana and Dush, Dushashana. But Pandu's sons are the five Pandavas, which are Arjun, Bhima, Yudhisthir, Nukula, and Sahadev. And so they were given the throne because Pandu was the rightful heir, so he went to his sons. But Dhritarashtra gets envious and gets mischievous, and here, therefore, he makes the plot to somehow put his sons on the throne. Krishna is not in agreement with that because the Pandavas are righteous, the Pandavas are devotees, and he wants Yudhisthira to sit on the throne to rule the world. Uh, Dhritarashtra wants his son Diodhana to sit on, but this, this is mischievous, he's envious, he's also very uh, cunning, and he is, um, you know, we're not qualified to sit on the throne, but Dhritarashtra thinks why my son should be on the throne because I'm the one that's supposed to inherit the throne, but because I'm blind and why not my sons? But so this is a fratricidal war and the, the armies are taking sides on two sides, the gurus on one side, the Pandavas on the other side. And the kings of the world come from every place to join one of the two armies. And then there are so many divisions of soldiers on both sides. There were more than 650 million uh, soldiers in this particular battle. It wasn't just the Kuru and Pandava dynasty, it was soldiers from all over the world who were favorable to one side or another. Arjuna is related to many of the uh, personalities on the other side, including his grandfather, Bhishma Dev, his martial teacher, Dronacharya. His, um, you know, he has cousins, brothers, others who are on the other side. He looks at the other side, he can't fight. He's thinking, well, better, we, how can we enjoy a kingdom if it is given at the blood of the, those we love, at the expense of the lives of those who are dear to us? So better let them have the kingdom. Uh, he's reasoning in that way. 
So he's becoming very much uh, uh, connected to the family mood. He's his friends and family members. So he's on a material platform. I mean, from, a, from one point of view, and Krishna Srila Prabhupada points it out, that because he was soft-hearted, he didn't want to continue. And he said, this is the na nature of a devotee. By nature, they're soft-hearted. But Krishna had another plan. And Krishna's plan was to establish righteous rule throughout the world, and King Yudhisthira was the one to do it. And so um, Krishna tried to settle the thing in a very peaceful way, but Duryodhana became so envious and so greedy that when Krishna appeared to uh, Duryodhana in one assembly and petitioned on behalf of the Pandavas, he told Krishna, I will not even give them uh, enough land that you can put a head of a pin on. So, um, and then he tried to arrest Krishna. Krishna showed his universal form and all the soldiers that came to arrest Krishna were immediately knocked down by the power of Krishna's universal form. Although the Odinus saw the universal form, he still went against Krishna. This is the nature of greediness. There are people even today in this world, they know God is powerful, they know God is supreme, but they're envious of God. So they work against God and they try to cause uh, havoc in the lives of those who are devotees of God. They're envious of the Lord and they're envious of the Lord's devotees. So Arjuna is in the quandary. He's a, he's a soldier. He's supposed to fight on religious principles. He's a Kshatriya, that is his duty. And he wants to give up his duty and go to the forest and simply, um, you know, become a mendicant. Krishna tells them, you know, you're a fool. say. You're lamenting for that which is not lamentable. Those who are wise lament neither for the living of the dead. You're on the bodily platform. Krishna smashes them before he even starts speaking the philosophy of, of uh, transcendence. He's giving him a little bit of a wake-up call and saying, you're simply lamenting which no wise man laments over. <laughs> and so do your duty, fight on behalf of religious principles. The, the Pandavas are meant to, to rule the world and you are the instrument to help bring that about. Arjuna, he can't hear because he's so much emotionally. And then he starts giving so many reasons. Well, you know, if the men were killed and the women are unprotected, if the women are unprotected and unscrupulous persons will take advantage of that. And then you'll have Vana Sankara, you'll have unwanted population and the world will go to hell. So that was one of his arguments. Good argument, very good argument. Um, yeah, how can we rule at that expense of those we love? And so many arguments. And after Krishna heard all the arguments, he's just listening. And then he spoke that, that verse, which we just recited. Now you're acting like a fool. Arjuna wakes up. And now he said, now I'm a soul surrender to you. Please guide me. And Krishna explains the difference between the body and the soul. And gradually goes through the whole principles of spiritual life from karma yoga to Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, he spins, mentions also Raja Yoga, various types of, yoga means to connect with the Supreme, and he shows that the highest form of connection with the Supreme is devotional service, or Bhakti Yoga, Yoginam, Apisarvesham, Madgatendanatmanaha, Stradaban Bhajate Yomam, Teme Yukta Tamomataha, Krishna speaks that last verse in the sixth chapter, after he describes the entire yoga system from one stage to another as it goes higher and higher. And then uh, as he explains this knowledge, he's, he's developing it more and more to the conclusion of what he's about to, to say. Arjuna is hearing, Arjuna is asking questions, and then Krishna is responding to the different questions according to the different principles of Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga. And there's five, there's five uh, 
categories that are mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. And I'll read that. That was what I was looking for in the text here. This Prabhupada says, the subject matter of Bhagavad Gita entails the comprehension of five basic truths. First of all, the science of God is explained. And then the constitutional position of the living entities, that's us, jivas. Then there is Ishwara, the supreme controller. And there are jivas, the living entities, which are controlled. So then there is Nityo and Nityonam. We are Nityonam. We are many. There is one who is controlling the many. He is also Nityo. He's eternal. And that is the Supreme Lord. Mm. And then Prabhupada goes on. Then there's Prakriti, material nature, time, the duration of existence of the whole universe and the manifestations of the material energy. So one of the main principles of the material energy is the time factor. The time factor moves the material energy from one situation to another. It brings about, it moves along, it develops, it gradually reduces and ultimately it vanishes. The six stages of material development to its ultimate destruction. And these are the principles of the time factor which influence the movements of the material energy like that. Just like when we're born, we have a very, we have a kind of a baby's body. As time moves on, the body develops and things in the body develops to a certain level. At one point, the body is fully developed. And then gradually, once it gets fully developed, it lasts for some time. And then gradually due to the time factor again, the body starts to deteriorate and then that is called old age and then ultimately it vanishes. So there are six changes and, and time factor is the element. And Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that he is that time factor or that energy which moves the material energy through its different stages. And then the last is karma. Karma is those activities that produce a certain results according to the nature of the activity. So as we desire, we act, and as we act, we get a certain result. And these results are in the, within the context of the three energies of the material energy, which are goodness, passion, and ignorance, or a combination of, of different these different modes and different proportions in these different proportional combinations, we get a certain activity or a certain result from our activity. And uh, that is called karma. Now, as it's explained in the Bhagavad Gita by, by the Acharyas, the jiva, that's us, we are eternal. We live eternally. We, we have never been not existing. We, we live we're now in this particular body, in this particular situation we're in, but we have been in other situations for many, many other lives. We cannot remember because death means forgetfulness. Just like Arjuna is questioning uh, a Krishna about, Krishna said, I spoke this knowledge to the sun god many, many millions of years ago, and you were also there but you forgot and I don't forget, I, I remember everything. And Prabhupada makes the point, because we change our bodies, we forget. But Krishna never changes his body because his body is totally spiritual. So he never forgets anything. He's always existing in his pure spiritual essence where our spiritual essence is covered as, we long, as long as we remained in the material world by the material energy. Therefore, we forget life after life after life. But still, we are eternal. And Krishna is eternal, Ishwara, Prakriti. Material energy is eternal, but at the same time, the manifestations of the material energy are temporary. So the ingredients that make up the material world, energy, earth, water, fire, air, uh, and, uh, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. These things, uh, actually the five basic elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, these are created by Krishna 
and therefore they are eternal. Once the creation manifests, it becomes eternal. So that eternal development uh, manifests itself in different forms. So there's always combinations of these five elements. And therefore the manifestations are temporary, but the elements that make up the manifestations are temporary. So you see, um, therefore material energy is eternal in its manifestation and in its, in its existence, but the manifestations are always changing. So as Prabhupada writes, there will always be a material world. It gets, goes through different stages, it gets destroyed, it gets recreated again, continuously. So that is also eternal. And time factor, which belongs to the material energy, is also eternal. In its in its in its effort in its e energy to change the manifestations. So time is that energy, and then the last one, karma. Karma is temporary. Karma can be changed. Karma can be eradicated. So that is the only one of the five subjects. These five subjects make up the entire Bhagavad Gita: Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Kala and karma. And karma is, a, is temporary. So we can come and it's meant, we are meant to re be, get rid of all our material reactions, both good, bad, and mixed, and come to the stage of being freed from all material actions and then be situated in our spiritual position in pure devotional service. So that's the whole process of bhakti is to destroy the reactions of previous karma and not create any new karma by performing more material activities. As long as the, the living entity connects with the material energy and performs material activities, they are building their karma again. So that karma is very complicated, very complex. Uh, even Krishna, when he was asked to explain the intricacies of karma, he says, they're too difficult, too complex to understand. He can explain it, but we can't understand it. Why does a particular person take birth in a particular family with a particular body, with a particular set of consciousness at the time of birth? It's not like birth is just a blank slate and then you write everything on it and that is called life. No, we start from where we left off in our previous life, although it is not revealed until the body and the mind develops into more developed stages. So we are eternal. And then of course, manifestations, time, and then karma is not eternal. And so these are the five subject matters that make up the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Uh, and Krishna explains that. So, um, yeah, so go down the page a little bit. Here now, here, it says, in conclusion, Bhagavad Gita is a transcendental literature which one should read very carefully. Gita sritam midam kumyam yagpata prayata puma. If one properly follows the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, one can be freed from all the miseries and anxieties of life. Bayam Sukadi Varjitan. One will be free from all fears in this life, and one's next life will be spiritual. That is called Gita Mahatmya. The Gita Mahatmya was, was spoken by Lord Shiva. And so, and this is explained even further. Um, go down the page and we'll read some more. Gita da dhyayana silasya pranayama paraspascha naiva shanti hi papani purva janma kritani cha. If one reads Bhagavad Gita very seriously, very sincerely and with all seriousness, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of his past misdeeds will not act upon him. That's from Gita Mahatmya number two. The Lord says very loudly in the Bhagavad Gita, the last portion, Sarva Dharma Parikshit Yam, 
Mammekam Sharanam Vaja Aham Tvam Sarvapate Vyo Moksa Yashyami Ma Suchaha. Abandon all varieties of religion, surrender to me. I shall deliver you from all sinful activities. Do not fear. The lust the Lord takes responsibility for one who surrenders to him of sin. So what does this verse say? This verse is saying, stop trying to deliver yourself. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> Stop making all your plans to improve your life. Just surrender to Krishna. Cancel. Abandon all varieties of religion. That means all ways by which you think you can elevate yourself. Give them all up. There's so many ways that you think you can elevate yourself through karma, through yoga, and through various types of rituals, pujas, homas, this, that, this, that. He said, forget it. Just, just surrender to me. Engage in my devotional service. I'll take, re the Lord takes full responsibility of one who surrenders unto him. And then, what is the result? Malani mochanam pumsam jalashnadam dine dine sakra gitam ritam shanam samsara malanasanam one may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water. But if one bathes even once in the sacred Ganga water of Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. That's the third verse from the Gita Mahatmya. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be right back because I'm going to, I think I need my glasses to continue. Okay, thank you for waiting. So, Gita su Gita Kartavya, Kim Anya Shastra Vistarai, Yaswayam Padmanabhasya, Mukha Padman Vinir Rishtam. Because Bhagavad Gita was spoken by the Supreme Lord, Personality of Godhead, one that need read any other Vedic literature. One need only attentively and regularly read and hear the Bhagavad Gita. This present age, people are absorbed in mundane activities, and it's not possible for them to read all the Vedic literature, and it's not necessary. Gita will suffice because it's the essence of all Vedic literature and because it's spoken by the Supreme Lord himself. As it says, Bhartaramriya Sarva Sam Vishnu Vaptrayam Vini Sritam Gita Gango Dakam Pitva Hornya Jamana Vidyati. One who drinks the water of the Ganga attains salvation. So what to speak of one who drinks the nectar of Bhagavad Gita? It's the, it's the essential nectar of the Mahabharata spoken by Krishna himself. Bhagavad Gita comes from the mouth of the Supreme Lord, emanates from the lotus feet of the Lord. And there is no difference between the mouth and the feet of the Lord. Therefore, but for an impartial study, we can appreciate Bhagavad Gita as being more important than the Ganga water. Saru Panishadu Gavo Dogre Gopala Nandano Partavatsa Sudir Bhutan Dugdam Nidam Ritam Mahat Gita is the essence of the Upanishad and it's just like a cow and Lord Krishna who is famous as a cowherd boy is milking the cow. Arjuna he's getting this milk he is like the calf and the learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the nectar of Bhagavad Gita. It's from Gita Mahatma number six. Ekam Shastra and Devika Putram Gitam. 
ekam shastra devaki putram gitam ekko deva devaki putram eva ekko mantra tasya namami ani karmya ke kam tasya devasya seva in the present day people are very much eager to have one scripture one god one religion and one occupation therefore ekam shastram devaki putram gitam let there be one scripture only one common scripture for the whole world, Bhagavad Gita. Ekko Deva, Deva Ki Putram Eva, let there be only one God for the whole world, Sri Krishna. Ekko Mantras, Tasya Namami, and one hymn, one mantra, one prayer, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Karmiekam, and let there be one work only, service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when we get a little bit of a summary from these Gita Upanishads of the essence of Bhagavad Gita and it's when it is exclusive in giving transcendental knowledge. Krishna very carefully speaks this knowledge in such a way that it brings one to the point of surrendering to the Supreme Personality of God and then devotion, which is the highest activity one can perform. Complete surrender to the lotus feet of the Lord with complete uh, adherence to the Lord's guidance given as he explains through his pure representative, his bona fide spiritual master like that. Okay, so uh, here's a little opportunity for us to re-explore and again go deeper into the Bhagavad Gita. Like all transcendental scriptures, the more you read it, the more you realize how much you don't know about it. <laughs> it's, um, it reveals itself as we become purified and as we read more and more and more. So. So tomorrow is the uh, actual ceremony, ceremonious day, which will be celebrated around the world in temples. The reading of the Bhagavad Gita uh, from beginning to end in a group session. Usually it's one person who is leading the chanting and everyone is following along like that. Usually it takes from uh, on the average two and a half hours to read the entire text like that. And people, some temples do it in different ways. Like when I was in um, the UK, um, they divided the Gita into three sections. First six chapters, the second six chapters, and the third six chapters. And after reading the first six chapters, they would have someone give a overview discussion on those six chapters with questions and answers to follow and that would go on for the second six chapters and finally in conclusion so this is uh, one of the ways there are many ways we can approach it essentially most temples just read the sanskrit continuously and because it's spoken by krishna and when it's chanted properly, it brings higher consciousness just by the chanting of the mantras in the different verses. One will feel transcendentally enlightened. One will feel the spiritual energy in a very strong way if one seriously enters into the chanting of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. And especially tomorrow, it is blessed by the anniversary of that and the Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna. He has summarized all of the knowledge in all scriptures and given it to us in what is known as the Gita Upanishads, uh, also known as the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so uh, these are some things. So if you, if you like, we can open it up for some kind of discussion, questions, devotees can speak about 
their own personal realizations, uh, their experiences in taking part in Gita, Gita Jayanti in previous years or whatever you want to speak in relationship to the Gita. And we recommend that everyone come on in your personal way with cameras like that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Gunwaraj, for the very wonderful class on the um, telling us, uh, uh, explaining the subject matter of Bhagavad Gita, the very basic truths. Um, Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Supreme Lord, and the Karma, and how Karma is like uh, not temporary, and uh, Kala is like eternal. And thank you for explaining uh, the importance of uh, reading Bhagavad Gita, understanding the instructions carefully, so we can be relieved from all miseries and anxieties of the life. And thank you for telling us the essence of Bhagavad Gita is to surrender to Lord Krishna, understand the knowledge and surrender to Lord Krishna. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, dear devotees, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please unmute yourself, or you can type in the chat box, or you can just uh, turn on your camera, I can share your comments or realizations. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanu Pranam, All Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Can you hear me? Hare Krishna yeah, Guru Maharaj. I can hear you good. Uh, I would think like uh, people who are born like in a different uh, religion, you know. And uh, how they want to uh, see like Krishna says, like surrender to Krishna, you know. So what is the possibility of the uh, who are born in a different uh, religion, how are they able to it's kind of hard on the top, you know, for them, like who people on different religion, you know, how they can. Yeah, Prabhupada has answered that question. And he says, you know, it's not a matter of religion. It's a matter of surrender to the Supreme Lord. So in every, in every faith path, we call it a religious path there is a conception of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to some extent or another. So one should follow one's tradition and surrender. And that's the whole thing. Surrender in the Christian tradition, in the Islamic tradition, in the Jewish tradition. The point is to surrender or to give yourself completely over to the Lord for his guidance and to engage in his service. So uh, there's only one God. So they, he goes by different names according to different traditions. God is one, not many. And surrender to God is one. You can surrender as a Christian. You can surrender as a as a uh, Hare Krishna, Vaishnava. Our religion, our tradition is called Vaishnava tradition. The whole point is surrender. <laughs> So, yeah, you can encourage people to be, if they say, you say, well, if you say you're a Christian, then in the Christian tradition, it says, thou shall not kill. So you should follow that. And that means all life, not just humans, but all life. So you can explain to them what are the principles that make up the, uh, the uh, principles of devotion. It can't be just to be a follower in name, to have a particular, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but what do I do? Well, I, I eat meat, 
I, uh, you know, I uh, have illicit sex. And then that's not surrender. That's, you know, that's just doing your own thing in the naming. So and that's called, uh, that's called, uh, what is it called? It's called uh, Sahajya or what else it's called? It's not real. In other words, it's artificial. So each religion teaches or each faith path teaches how to surrender to the Lord. And that should be followed. So, like, what benefit will they get if, like, uh, who believe like in Jesus? You know, so how they can like, uh, are they getting maybe next step or maybe who's are real serious in? Well, uh, most people, different? most people don't follow their tradition. So we, what we do is we introduce the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, and we don't call it, you know, it's something Hindu, something Indian. We say that this is a spiritual mantra that works for everyone. And then one should follow, one can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And um, we even have today, we have people who are in the Christian tradition who follow Christianity, but they chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. There are people like that today. In fact, some of them are even priests. We even know some priests who, uh, you know, because they see that the chanting of Hare Krishna is very, very direct and very, very uplifting. They can feel the presence of God. And they follow their own prayers too. So we recommend, sometimes we say, well, if, here, try, the, try, try chanting this mantra. It's a spiritual mantra. It's not a sectarian mantra. It doesn't belong to any particular tradition. Did that help? Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes like we trying to give them books, but sometimes they like a little strong and like uh, believe in Jesus or things that they don't accept sometimes, you know, so just. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, some people that, will accept and some will not accept. But yeah, sure. If you can explain it more clearly, sometimes they, they become curious. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Raj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Raj, I wanted to ask uh, sleep in. Uh, all temples have their recitations of Bhagavad Gita, yet in some temples there's also a fire sacrifice. And I wondered what the uh, benefits were of having the fire sacrifice as well. Yeah, we're doing that here in Ljubljana today, which is the day before the Gita. The devotees are doing it in the temple here. It's called, um, it's a homa. It's preparing the, the atmosphere for the chanting of the, uh, the mantras. Yagyas have a particular goal. A yagya is, not, is performed in a particular way with a particular goal in mind. And that's to prepare the consciousness for all the participants for the actual, actual yagya, which is the chanting of the Entire Bhagavad Gita. I see. And introducing introducing that atmosphere, that spiritual atmosphere. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Matsya, you had a question? <laughs> Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu, my humble obeisances. Glory to Shri Prabhupada. Apologies, I can't switch on my camera for two reasons. I'm watching over the iPad and it doesn't allow for some reason. I think I have to go into the settings. 
And the other reason is that Machine Galila is in the other room watching on her device and our internet would not be able to support both cameras, I think. So you if, you go to her, if you want, you can go to her camera. Her camera works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Allow me a second and I will, I will uh, uh, go running to, to, to her and then uh, <laughs> we'll talk. We'll there resume, you. just one second, please. Okay. Two seconds are allowed. Okay, here he is. Thank you. <laughs> Very good stuff. All right. One of the um, messages of the Bhagavad Gita. A little louder. Is, uh, the volume is a little low. Messages of the Bhagavad Gita is that uh, it's still low. It has to go. It has to go. The volume has to come up. <laughs> Ah, okay. We'll, we'll switch on the, on the microphone. Is it better? That's it. So, once again, then one of the messages of the. Uh, still, it's still low for some reason. I don't know. Is this, is this all right? Is it better? No, I don't know. Uh, if if other devotees can switch off their microphones, maybe. Yeah. Uh, For some reason, we can't hear you. Um, you might have okay. to go back to where you were in the beginning because <laughs> you had better volume in the other room, and we can see you here, but we can't hear you. The other room, we can not see you, and we can hear you. Yeah, but so. hear me. Okay, just for the sake of the question. So can you can you hear me now? I, we can. The volume's coming through, but it's so faint that it's it's practically an or inaudible. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other device then. Uh, okay. No, unfortunately, the other device is not available anymore. It's, 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 continue. it's still it's still not audible enough. Okay, devotees, let someone else ask the question, and then I will I will try to resume later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Maybe you can type in the chat box. We can read out uh, the question. Yeah, that's. I even go go back to your computer and then try from there. Uh, it's it's. Okay, how is this? It's perfect. All right, excellent. Um, so here it is. Um, one of the messages of the Bhagavad Gita is that uh, um, that life determines our problems, but we determine the size of our problems. And then what comes to mind instantly is uh, humility, tolerance, but also the fact that the problems are not eternal. They are temporary. So would you like to say something more about this? Would you like to speak on this topic that life determines the problems? Um, we, we come to certain situations and we perceive them in our specific way, but we determine the size of those problems. Mm -hmm. Well, just like what Arjuna thought, it is completely overwhelming and completely bewildering and completely 
out of any way that he can manage. But then Krishna mm -hmm. explained that's not really the case. Yeah, but Krishna took, had it, spoke the whole Bhagavad Gita in order to, for him to be completely convinced. So, um, yes, living in the material world, there are built-in problems. And then there's the problems we create. The problems we create are based on our desire to enjoy material energy. So we can reduce those problems when, as soon as we stop trying to enjoy the material energy and take shelter of the spiritual energy and engage in devotional service. So the self-created problems which come due to our previous material desires that we try to fulfill can be eradicated by um, uh, by devotional service. But then there's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna explains Marta Sparsa Sukuntaya Sitno Sanan Sukadukada Agatha Inu Nityas Tamsa Tikshiva Bharata. The non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course of time are like the appearance and disappearance of the winter and summer seasons. They rise from sense perception, O Arjun, and one should tolerate them without becoming disturbed. So these are the built-in problems, Adiyatmika, Adibautika, Adidaipika, the miseries of the mind and body, miseries of other living entities, and miseries of higher powers. These you can't stop, but uh, Krishna says tolerate. Tolerate. So learning to tolerate uh, helps us to rise above the effects of these uh, built-in clashes or uh, imposed difficulties upon us. Uh, that through that tolerance and taking shelter of Krishna also helps to mitigate these problems and minimize them. Sometimes we say that for a devotee, there is no suffering because the devotee doesn't is not looking towards the material energy for any gain. Therefore, what they go through is a type of difficulty that comes with having a material body and a material and a material body or living in the material world. But then, um, by taking shelter of Krishna we can have a tendency to rise above these, or when we say, uh, just like Prabhupada would use the example of a person who is undergoing an operation. He used the example of Stalin. Stalin was, had such a powerful mind that he wanted to watch his own operation without an anesthesia. He had some operation on his hand or something. And so he needed, and they wanted to, it was very severe work. So they wanted to give him an anesthesia. He said, no, I want to watch. So, um, yeah. Uh, you see that the power of the mind, when it's directed to taking shelter of Krishna, can help one rise above the effects of these different difficulties that come. And that's the built-in ones. The other ones we have to somehow or other eliminate by not trying to fulfill our material desires. And then these problems go away. So knowing a little bit about your situation, you know, you are sometimes harassed in certain different ways taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of the holy name, taking shelter of the process of Krishna consciousness helps to uh, fix our mind uh, in a higher way where it becomes a matter of tolerance and not a matter of suffering. Is that all right? <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean... You know, everyone has to undergo some difficulties when you when you have a material body. 
That means difficulty. It's just the way it is. <laughs> but when we try to fulfill material desires, then we're creating more difficulties. Thank you, Maharaj. Is that all right? We're looking forward to your arrival to Zagreb. We'd like to tell you some, some things and some details. Some what? We're looking forward to your arrival to Zagreb. We would like to speak with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Um, Guru Maharaj, there's a question on the chat box. I still have time. Can I read that question? Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is by devotee uh, Maja Barkopik. Uh, Hare Krishna, whether it is better to quote Sanskrit or translate the verses of the Bhagavad Gita? I prefer the Sanskrit. Okay. It has a certain uh, spiritual power attached to it. And then when you chant it, when you're chanting it, nice and loudly and clearly without any break it takes your consciousness right to the spiritual realm very powerful so i prefer the sanskrit chanting rather than chanting the translations and i i think it's appropriate that we speak what krishna has spoken as he spoke it And uh, what if you cannot pronounce right? Because mostly I can, uh, the sensory, I cannot, how to can... Then do it in English, then, if it's better for you. Yeah, this I do it. Is. Yeah. It's an, uh, I prefer the Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really prefer the Sanskrit. <laughs> Somehow I cannot pronounce this, this uh, is a keep. Okay. Some people pronounce it, they don't do, even do the English, they do it in their local language, whatever language, whatever country they're in, they do it in that. Hare Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, I think that is a question. Okay. I don't see any questions, Guru Maharaj. Um, it's one hour past uh, with your permission. Okay. In the end of class. So, uh, yeah, we're a few minutes past the hour. All right. So, uh, tomorrow will be Gita Jayanti. And um, maybe we'll speak some more about Gita. And then, because it is Ekadasi also. We'll conclude the program with chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra for an extended period of time. Uh, do you think I can ask a quick question, Sudha Mataji? Uh, yes, Mataji, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Is all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Tomorrow, being Gita Jayanti, uh, would you please kindly give us some guidance about? Uh, we as devotees know that you know reading of the Gita is important and we're going to be spending time. But what about people who are just coming to the temple or just visitors or just or, you know just guests or outsiders? How they can they can they can just listen and benefit. They'll benefit just by listening. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we don't have to change. Just, they can just hear. That's all. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Nice to see you all. I hope you like my wide angle screen. I, I increased the size of my camera, so 
It's, I don't know if it's any better than it was before. It's better, yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus, we can hear clear to me. Okay, good. <laughs> Hare Krishna, my obeisances to everyone. Vanchakalpa to Rupas Chakra, Pasindu Beva Chapti Tanam, Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaho, Namaho, Gaur, Bhavane Ki Jai. Thank you. Krishna Maha Mantra Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hari, Hari, Hari. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you, Dimitri. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sita Mataji, for hosting this call and taking care of all the questions and just managing things nicely. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Krishna. Thank you. Hare. I'll end the call. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Happy Gita Jayanti to all my brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> Happy Gita Jayanti to you too, Mataji. Hari Bol. Hari Bol Swaha. Hari Krishna. <laughs>